Hello, Chem One. Welcome to the second video of the day of the week um, revolving around the concept of significant figures or significant digits. Um, this video is going to be very, very important in your understanding of how to do mathematical calculations or more importantly how to report out your final results during a after a mathematical calculation so let's talk about the the concept here so if i were to ask you a question and like i just introduced the concept of significant figures i want you to think about what do, do you think what do you think the term significant figure means maybe you've heard chem 2 kids um, talk about sig figs. Maybe you've heard other classes already have done significant digits. Um, you hear a little bit about it, but maybe you haven't. Maybe you're just hearing this term for the first time here. What do you think the term significant figure means? And maybe you can break that down in context, the term significant and the term figure. So I'll give you a second to think about that, and then we'll come back and start the video. So significant figure significant figure now the word significant does not necessarily mean important in our scientific um, background significant is not going to be 100 percent connected to important it's going to be more connected to um, precision so if i were to want to have outcomes for this i want to know what significant figures are by the ten, by the end of this i want to be able to ask myself why do i need them what's the what's their um, importance and then how can i manipulate them and that's going to be the latter part of this video so i already said the significant in our case revolves around precision or the opposite of precision is uncertainty um, whenever we write down a number like i'll, I'll use the example you use a um, balance in school and you put something on the balance if you put something on the balance and it read um, 2.42 grams would you write down for your calculations for um, you know 4.24 you would just write down four because that's close enough no you would use the tool to the degree of precision that the tool gives you but there's always going to be some uncertainty associated with it. When you say, okay, I'm going to write down 4.24 grams, you wouldn't write down, um, if the balance gave you four, oops, let's go backwards, sorry about that. Um, I got to get my pen out, I thought my pen was up. If the balance gave you 4.24 grams, you would not write down, well, it was at 4.24000000000. That would be ridiculous. You wouldn't just add zeros to the end. That would imply that you know that that number on the balance was really, 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 really precise. And you don't. You just know that it was 4.24. It was only good to that digit. That's the degree of uncertainty. Let's see how we would use this. So this is an example of a graduated cylinder, and it's a space within a graduated cylinder. And the blue part on the bottom represents the water in the graduated cylinder. So if I were to read this, I am absolutely sure, because that's the 35 mark, this is 36, this is 37, that this measurement of my volume is somewhere between, between 36 and 37. So I'm going to call it 36 point something. I don't know exactly what that something is, but I'm going to guesstimate. If I were doing this, I would take in my mind's eye, I would separate these two spaces into 10 spots, which is what you want to do, and break it into 10 little spaces and say, well, it looks like that's really close to halfway. So I would call it 36.5 milliliters. You may say 36.4. You may say 36.6. I can't see you getting a number outside of that range, but you might get one of those numbers. Um, that these two digits, I am absolutely positively certain of. I am sure of the three and the six. The last one, I'm guessing. I am estimating. And that's where significant figures come in. Because you're always going to be take all the numbers you're absolutely sure and certain of and only have one, one of the numbers be one you're not sure of. Catch it. I wouldn't say, hmm, I think this is 36.47. That would be crazy because I don't know where the 47 is. I can't break that space into 100 spots and be very accurate. But I can break it down into 10. So, 
this number has three significant digits or significant figures. So why do we have uncertainty? Like I've already said, tools have limitations. No tool is infinitely precise. However, different tools have different degrees of precision. So of these two balances, which one would you be least um, certain of your measurement? The one on the left or the one on the right? Which one, if I were to take a, I'm going to, I'm going to go, go there and say, I go to the, the um, grocery store and I want to measure out, I, I haven't got, I've only got apples that are 49 cents. I'm oh, sorry, bananas are like 49 cents a pound. I got, I only have 98 cents. I want to get exactly two pounds. Would I put it on the left balance or would I put it on the right balance? Well, the, tr the truth is when you go to the grocery store, the one on the left is, or something very similar to it, is the one that's in the department. So there's a spring scale balance where you can get a good estimate of how much mass you have, how many pounds of bananas you have. But when you go up front and you put, they put them onto that little beep, 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 that thing right there in front has a scale that's an electronic scale. This, the one on the left is much less precise, has more uncertainty than the one on the right. So when wanting to have the optimal amount of precision, you would use a scientific or an electronic balance. So when measuring or when given numbers for, for our measurements, um, besides getting them off of a tool, when they're expressed to you, they will have a certain number. So like, for instance, the earlier one, I had 36.5 mils. There are rules associated with how many significant digits a, a specific number has. And uh, I, I, I often say that when talking about significant digits, the digits that are possible in a number, there are 10 options. There's a 1, a 2, a 3, a 4, a 5, a 6, a 7, a 8, a 9, or a 0. Those are my possible digits that fall into each one of the spots on a measurement. First rule is associated with the first nine, non-zeros. Anything but zeros are always going to be significant. Always, 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 always. So if I had the number of 3,486 grams, that would be, that number would have four significant digits. Every single one of those numbers would be significant. Okay. And you're going to see why knowing which digits are significant and how many significant digits there are, are going to play a role a little bit later on in this PowerPoint. But suffice it to say, we want to know how many significant digits a number has and which digits are significant. These are all non-zeros. They're all significant. Second rule, third rule, fourth rule, and fifth rule all revolve around the zero. There's three different places a zero can be. Okay, so if I had, let's say, um, 0 0.03200420000, 0, the numbers can be either out front, in the middle, or at the end. For each one of those, there's a different set of rules. So let's look at the first one. The ones out front, they're never significant. The ones out front, they're just placeholders. So if I had the number 0 0.04 eight, six, and say that was in grams, just to make things make more sense, um, that's going to have only three sig figs. Now, are these numbers out front important? Absolutely, but they're placeholders. I could just as easily write this number as 48.6 milligrams. Now, I don't have any zeros at all in there. And it has three sig figs. My measurement has three sig figs. How I express it with the zeros out front is just a placeholder. Okay, what about the zeros when they're in the middle? Well, they're always good. Okay, it just so happens that that number in the middle we're sure of. We said that we're always going to have ones we're absolutely sure of. And then one we're going to be estimating. We are sure of that zero. We are absolutely sure that zero, so that's going to be significant. So this number has four significant digits. What about in the back? Well, there's a condition to the back, the trailing zeros. Trailing zeros are only significant if the number contains a decimal point. So if the number contains a decimal point, it's going to be significant. So 9.300 has four significant figures. But if we had 9, 3, 
zero, zero, with no decimal point, that would only have two. A decimal point makes a difference. Sometimes we're going to have exact numbers. Exact numbers for the case of the calculations, which we're going to talk about next, will have an infinite number of sig figs. Every single number is going to be significant. So if I had 1,000 milliliters in a meter, there's this exact number. That's a defined value that has three significant digits. If I had 2.54 centimeters in an inch, some would argue, I will argue against it, but some will argue that that is an exact measurement that has three significant digits. But what they're saying is, that that's going to have infinite. That's going to be a defined value. Again, I would argue that, but your book um, and the the um, PowerPoints we use and the handouts we use are all going to use 2.54 as having an unlimited number of sig figs as being defined value. So how do we avoid ambiguity? What is ambiguity? Ambiguity is when you're not sure and the number doesn't, as it's written, doesn't express the number of sig figs that you want it to. And the number they use is 200. So they use the number 200. Let me pick a different color pen so my, my writing can be stand out relative to what's on the slide. So say I have the number 200. They use the number 200. Well, that number as written looks like it only has one sig fig. And, but wait, I, I, I want to tell you that when I measured that 200 centimeters, it was on the line between the 199 centimeters and the 201 centimeters. So I'm estimating, I'm guessing that it was like on the 200 centimeters. I want to make this zero good. There's two ways to do that. One, put a decimal. Put a decimal in the end. Now that number has a decimal, and now it's good to the decimal. Second way, scientific notation. This number has three sig figs. That number has three sig figs. That number is good to the, the, the second zero after the two. It's much, much clearer. Very rarely do we write in scientific notation, but that is the correct way to do that. Okay, so let's try this. How many sig figs does each number have? How many sig figs does each of these numbers have? So what about that number? Did you say that number had five sig figs? Then you would be correct. What about this one? How many sig figs does that have? Again, relatively easy. That number has four digits and all of them are significant. The significant has four sig figs. What about this measurement? This number has six digits but only five of them are significant. That last zero is not significant because there is no decimal place. It is a number that is trailing the um, significant digits, but there is no decimal point. What about this number? That was kind of easy. The times 10 to the third is just a distractor. It's just a, a thing for placeholders. That has three sig figs. What about this one? This number has five digits, but the first three zeros are in the front. So they're leading zeros. They are not significant. This number only has two sig figs. And finally, what about this one? 3,200,000 has seven total digits, but only two of them are significant. Now, as far as knowing significant digits, what we saw here on this practice is exactly what we need for the next phase of using significant figures. We need to know not only how many significant digits a number has, but also which ones, which digits are significant. So what are we going to do with these significant digits? What are we going to do with these significant figures? Well, it all revolves around using math. Um, in chem, in middle school, or even in physics, you might have been asked to do calculations. And here's a, a typical calculation that happens in physical science where you take a mass of something and you take a volume of something and they ask you to calculate the density. Now, what would you do? Well, if you know that density is nothing more than mass divided by volume, you want to calculate the density. Density is mass divided by volume. You're going to take the two numbers that you're given, the mass and the volume, and put them into the equation. So I take 129.7 um, 
129 and divide it by 45.5. I do the math and my calculator gives me this number. Now, what do you do? Your teacher asks you to calculate the density. Do you write down this whole number? Oops, I went away. Sorry, I got to get my pen back. Um, do you write down this whole number? Probably not. Okay, some of you might have written down exactly what's in your calculator thinking, hey, I'm going to give the teacher exactly what they want. Um, that would be one option. Um, some of you might have just says, well, my calculator gave me that. I'm going to call it three. Or my calculator gave me that number. I'm going to call it 2.8. Again, you see the trend here. My calculator gave me that number. I'm going to call it 2.84. That seems kind of cool to do. Or my calculator gave me that that one right there. That's kind of weird. So it's kind of small. So I'm going to go ahead and go 2.835. And you pick some number, unless your teacher specifically told you, report your answer to one digit past the decimal. Report your no answer to the whole, ones place. Report your answer to three digits. Something the teacher tells you. But if you're left totally to your own um, accord, sometimes you pick whatever you want to pick. Well, I'm going to tell you there's a right way to do this. There's a right way to round this. And that's actually what the remainder of the video is about, is trying to determine how to use significant figures and mathematical operations in order to correctly round your answer. And for those of you who are playing again, playing um, at home, this is the correct answer. 2.84 is the correct answer. Let me explain to you why. So when doing math on any numbers, there's two real options. There's either you're going to be adding or subtracting the numbers together, or you're going to be multiplying and dividing the numbers together. And those two fall under two very, very different camps. Let's deal with the easy one first. The easy one is multiplication and division. Let me read this to you. It says the number of sig figs in the result equals the number of in the least precise measurement used in the calculation. Again, the idea here is you are at the mercy of whichever tool gives you the least amount of precision. You are at the mercy of whichever tool gives you the least amount of precision. On our previous example, if you wrote 2.83516483 grams per mil, you're given a false sense of the precision of your answer. I am sure that it is good out to the whatever that is, ninth decimal place. That's crazy, especially considering you used the balance poorly by only using the, the to the ones place, and your graduated cylinder not so bad. So it gives you definitely a false sense of, of precision. So how do we do this? We go ahead and we would ultimately just multiply the numbers together. And I get, uh, what is that? 12.76. And then I'm going to round it. So 12.76 rounded to two sig figs is 13. Why two sig figs? Well, 6.38 has three sig figs and 2.0 has two sig figs. And the least precise measurement is the one that has two. So therefore I have to round only to two significant digits. So let's see if we can do this on your own. So if I want to multiply these two numbers together and my calculator gives me this number, what answer would I give? Well, considering the 7.0 only has two sig figs, I can only report my number to two sig figs. So I have 23. What about these two? So if I do that, I get this number. Whoa, 100 divided by 23.7. I get a really crazy number. But considering 23.7 only has three sig figs, I can only report to three sig figs. 0 0.02 times 2.371. This is what my calculator gives me. But again, because the 0.2 only has one sig fig, I can only report to one sig fig. What about these two? Actually, both of them have two significant digits. So when I do the division here, I can only report my answer to two sig figs. 18, 18.2 times 3.23. Malt do the math. I get this number, big snarly number. And because 3.23 only has three sig figs, I can only report to three sig figs. So I have to round and get rid of that two and um, bump it down so the seven 
stays and since it's a two um, put a zero in that spot don't lose the two don't lose the spot you wouldn't report 587 that would be weird you leave some put something in that spot to fill the hole what about these two do the math i get this and then since 2.87 has only three sig figs then i round to three sig figs okay what about the other camp the other camp is a little more complicated but used a whole lot less in especially in chemistry and that is the addition subtraction so for addition subtraction the rule is that the number of decimal places in the result equals the number of decimal places in the least precise measurement so we're looking now at number of digit so let's look at this so here's an example there it is if i add 6.8 to 11.9 nine three four what's going to happen here is i notice that this number sorry this number has one digit past the decimal this one has three so because of that i have to round to the least precise tools measurement which means i have to round to the tenths place one digit past the decimal so when i round this number at the bottom to one digit past the decimal i get 18.7 has only three sig figs my first number has two sig figs my last number has five my answer has three because with addition subtraction you're not talking about number of significant digits you're talking about location of the last sig fig where is which tool is least precise let's look at some examples so if i want to do this math add these two numbers together this is what my calculator gives me but because this tool goes only to one digit past the decimal my answer can only go to one digit past the decimal if i want to subtract these two numbers this is what my calculator gives me but because the first tool only goes one digit past the decimal my answer can only go one digit past the decimal if i want to add these two numbers together this is what i get but this first number goes only two digits past the decimal whereas the second one goes three so i can only round to one two digits past the decimal so i get 2.39 i do the math on these two this is what my calculator gives me you'll notice on all the examples first thing you do just punch the numbers into the calculator and then determine what you're going to do don't round everything ahead of time just punch the numbers as they're given into the calculator and then go back and determine um, how you're going to round this number has only one digit past the decimal so my answer can only have one digit past the decimal add these two together again this first number only has one digit past the decimal where the second has two so i can only report to one and then this was tricky i put these two in the calculator i subtract them and this is what i get but both of these numbers have three digits past the decimal this number only has two so I actually have to add a zero to make sure that this has three digits past the decimal. And that's significant figures. Okay, so that wraps up the concept of significant figures. On all calculations that you're going to be doing for this for the next two or three weeks, anytime you punch numbers into a calculator, the very last thing you should ask yourself is to how many significant digits, how many significant figures should i report my final answer and the answer can be found by determining what operation did i use did i use multiplication and division in which case i'm going to be counting the number of sig figs or did i use addition and subtraction in which case i'm going to look for the um, last sig fig which one has the most or the least number past the decimal so everybody stay happy stay healthy stay safe practice that social distancing I know we're getting all getting a little stir crazy. I hope to see you guys real soon, hopefully by the end of the year. Um, and I can say this for the first time now because you know what they are. Sig figs really do matter. Sig figs matter. Take care. Toodles.